Rev up the fun with all new delicious treats from Edible, inspired by the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe game on the Nintendo Switch system. Power up with Rainbow Road platters and arrangements filled with fresh pineapple stars, colorful swizzle strawberries, and all new cookie sandwiches. Featuring creamy whipped frosting, sandwiched between two handcrafted cookies with rainbow sprinkles on top. For a variety of gifts that make everyone feel like a champ, shop edible.com today. Game rated E for everyone. Game and system sold separately. If you've ever been a renter, you know it's stressful to find a place with everything you love and nothing you don't. But did you know Zillow does rentals? It makes the search so easy. They have filters for pretty much everything, so you can find that place that's in your budget, but also isn't a shoebox. Or a place that's close to your parents, but far enough they have to call first. Plus, it's easy to apply, request tours, and pay rent in the app. Head to ZillowRentals.com and find your sweet spot. Yeah, we, we, we're on this. We're, we're getting better. We're messing us up. <laughs> Battle's the outlier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hey, this is a uh, exclusive mini soap that I have for you. Now, I am what some may call a internet meme historian. I love internet memes. And especially love things that uh, turn out one thing, one way, and then turn into a meme out of just sure ass hattery. So now <laughs> I am on Twitter and I just like to follow like drama on Twitter. And also that's where I get, un- unfortunately that's where I get a lot of news from because a lot of news breaks on Twitter too. So now earlier this year, a, uh, a black trans woman reportedly went missing on Twitter and everyone was on high alert because the rate of like black trans deaths and assaults are super high in America and that's fucked up. So when this woman went missing, everyone was like, we got to find her. But turns out she didn't go missing. This is all made up for clout and money. No. Yep. This is about the uh, hashtag find Psy. So now, now I just want to preface this by saying that the surge of transgender, like violence against trans people in the United States has passed a really grim milestone. In the last seven months, the number of trans people suspected of being murdered has like shot up between 2019 2020 and trans transgender people especially black and latino transgender women are the ones who are most like affected and faced when it comes to violence and stuff like that which is why when this uh woman went missing everyone wanted to find her give aid and do whatever they can to resolve this or get answers so now on february 17th uh, Twitter started to rally together to find Cy Landing, who allegedly went missing in Connecticut, Ohio. The hashtag find Cy was seen, and it was like, it was a good way to track the whole situation. Because I remember I was following it in real time, and it sort of like the evolve and like the scam came forward. And I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> oh no, the tea. <laughs> the tea is hot. <laughs> so now, the early hours of February 17th, it all started when this woman posted a video hiding in a basement saying like, you know, I'm in danger, help me, find me. And then that was it. The video cut, like a 30 second video. And then after that, another page retweeted it saying that Sai, a young black trans woman who ha- is at an increased risk of violence, has been kidnapped in, in Connecticut, Ohio. On their Instagram page, they posted a quick video in a dark basement saying that a tall 40 to 50 year old Latino man has taken them and to please help. So after that, a GoFundMe page popped up and it was shared on social media to help, you know, find Sai. which at first people were like, why are we raising money to, she just went missing, why are we raising money? Should we be like, Shouldn't the police be getting involved? Right, so that, right. So that was very sus. So now the, the page was titled, Help a Black Trans Woman, FFS, FFS, SRS, in Survival. And it gained $50,000. Oh, 
total. And to date, when I last checked, like a couple weeks ago, it had reached 60k, but it's like shut down. Oh, it's just still up, but they're like no longer accepting money. And it topped off at over 60k. Mm. Yeah. So now, although the page is being shared, the donation and messages included like hopes to find her. The p uh the pa- uh the page wasn't like they backdated it, and it was something else before it was fine side. So it was a completely different mm-hmm. donation page that just changed the name over. So now, as the search is still happening, hundreds of people in LA and Ohio were calling the police because they're like, hey, someone's missing. Uh, people were scouring the internet looking for clues between like people in LA and Ohio because she also lived in LA at the time too. And just to see what they can do, you have like people, Instagram celebrities advocating to like find her, people like hitting the streets to, like just get any information. And uh, some people were getting suspicious when looking into the GoFundMe because they couldn't surmise what the money was going to. And trying to ask the people who created it, they were never getting any answers to what the money is actually for <laughs> and why we need 60k to find her. And that's such a bummer because like direct actions, like my favorite way to like donate money to anything. It's like, right to the it, sword. Exactly. It's so good and you don't have to worry about like a big organization mismanaging it. You know, like you just like, I know this like community organizers Venmo and they're like, hey, we're trying to buy stuff today for yeah, this. We're, like, we're, doing, like, we're doing a Bell Fund donate. And it's like, yeah, oh, that, oh man, it, it hurts so much to hear because, you know, hate to see it. you know, black and brown trans women are such a target and I, I'm going to let you finish before I say anything, but yeah. <laughs> I, I'm guessing it wasn't legit. <laughs> so now, Sai herself was a regular Twitter user, and uh, she had actually shared this page before it was changed over on January 30th. And it was initially created on January 18th, 40 days before the whole hashtag started. And on a deleted Instagram video, on Sai's own Instagram page, days after the hashtag blew up, she said, Hey, so everything got blown out of proportion. I'm fine. Thank you so much for the messages and support, but everything's good. Thank you. And the internet said, hold the fuck up. <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me? What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> everything got blown out of fucking proportion. <laughs> so now everyone's like freaking out. It's been like a week and we're all like, you just raised 60K and you're saying, what happened? What happened to you? (laughs) On Twitter, her roommate actually said that Saw has been found and will be returning home. And the caption also read, uh, update, I was just told that Sasha, that's her real name, is okay, will be flying back to LA tomorrow. Uh, I just got off of FaceTime with her. We talked, she's fine, I'm a close friend of hers, and I'm reassured that she is no longer in any danger and will be in California tomorrow. Then, at this same time, while this is all blowing up, Sai's sister started, like, spilling the tea on everybody. Uh, she told everyone that not only is Sai safe, that she never was in any danger, she never was missing, and that this was all a scam. And that she has a long history of making fake GoFundMe's to get money to live in hashtag influencer lifestyle. Ooh. Yeah. So now Twitter just blew up in heat <laughs> and it was on fire with people saying that the whole thing was fake. You got people saying that the whole thing was real. You got people still trying to like bring away to say, all right, well, this was fake, but hey, black and you know, brown trans people are still at risk. You know, let's just like keep focusing on our energy. Hey, that this is still a thing, even though this one person scammed us. Does not think that all these incidences are fake. Then you have like other people saying that sister's lying and she's just like transphobic. <laughs> so like everyone's fighting, and it's building and building and building until finally, Sai herself drops a forty-minute-long apology video. I mean, yeah. she wants to be an influencer. I guess that's like, that's the way to do it. The way to do it, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, I watched the video too. It was like the exact same, like a white backdrop, bare face, no makeup, you know, hair uh-huh. pulled back. So you seem relatable. On the floor. <laughs> like, it's a real, one of those real, like James Charles. Everybody knows that See, poor the people don't have time. chairs. You have to sit on the floor. You have to sit on the floor, yes. Because <laughs> if you're poor, you don't have, we don't have bed frames. We're all on the floor mm-hmm. here. <laughs> Unless you're Jeffree Star and you're doing an uh, apology video, then you've got to have on your, your multi-million yeah, your dollar 
uh, mansion in the background. <laughs> on, on your on your on your bougie couch in like a Louis Vuitton robe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now in her video, she reportedly acknowledged that there that she made mistakes and apologized to those who came together to try to find her. And she specifically uh, specifically apologized to black trans and black women saying that hey sorry that i made us all look bad basically she said that i knew it was wrong and i am disgusted at pretending to be kidnapped then went on to explain why they faked their kidnapping she said that i'm not going to come to you crying and asking for forgiveness because i don't need your forgiveness i don't need anyone's forgiveness i just need to clear my name and say my part she, yeah right. <laughs> She sorry, explained, not sorry. <laughs> basically, yeah, sorry I stole your money, not sorry. Uh, she explained that the lack of support she had as a child in their family had like twisted her understanding of affection in some ways. And that she also said that she faked this. That her, her faking this doesn't like take away the validation from black trans women out there. And then she further on apologized to those who got dragged into the saga saying that you know sorry that this happened to you but i did what i did that's it then when people started to bring up the whole gofundme thing she said that the money in the campaign was started back in january and she just changed the name over to continue funding herself to live her lifestyle and that she will be disabling it soon which she never disabled <laughs> And that the fundraiser was initially created for a cosmetic modification surgery. And she just wasn't getting enough money for that. So she decided to fake a kidnapping to raise the amount of money that she wanted to get her surgeries done. Is she getting any charges? No. <laughs> Not at all. What? So, no. wait, question. Did could... the police actually investigate this? They, they, so they started an investigation. Because all the people coming in and calling in LA and Ohio an investigation was started and they were actually police were actually following the whole square saga too okay cause I was gonna say like if the police never actually got involved then I could see how maybe she wouldn't get charged even though it's yes. shitty but like if they are yeah, so then it, it, it was started but like nothing like boots didn't actually hit the ground oh yeah, I because wonder if there were any like uh you know six foot tall Latino men in Ohio that got like uh, I hope not. Stopped <laughs> and searched and questioned over yeah. this lie. Yeah. So now, after hours of being called out, uh, her apology video was taken down off Twitter and YouTube, uh, and then her account was unavailable. She deleted her account and just left the internet completely. And uh, yeah, that's the saga of Fine Sai, a woman who just wanted to get cosmetic, cosmetic surgery. So instead of traditionally going out and trying to ask people for fundings, decided to fake her kidnapping. <laughs> And it took her money and ran. Well, and, you know, set the whole Twitter movement scape. back. Yeah. 60K and, like, a ton of goodwill. Yeah. I, imagine what that 60K could have done when given to the right organization. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. She's going to use that 60K to, like, change her face so nobody recognizes her anymore. <laughs> it, it, it pro- hey, shit. It, <laughs> you might I mean, as well. is GoFundMe going to let her keep the money? Well, so I, I, I checked a couple weeks ago, and like the account was still up. It just wasn't taking mm-hmm. donations anymore. So I don't know if she's because this is like just happened. So I don't know if she's unable to get the money, and if go. I, I don't know. I'm assuming that people were reporting it because I saw that on Twitter too that they're reporting it to GoFundMe, but GoFundMe hasn't like stepped in and taken it down yeah, yet. I, feel I, like say, if she yeah. Hasn't I don't think that's petty to try to get it taken down. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering if like the whole issue of taking it down is like because it was something else and she just changed the name. Mm-hmm. If she could just argue that like, well, it was for like cosmetic surgeries, yeah. <laughs> or like only accepting donations like after the date of the, or like getting rid of those donations after the date of the kidnapping fake. Yeah, but- scandal. Shit's wild. But hey, don't be shitty on Facebook or on Twitter, please. Because guess what. Yeah. They will find you out. <laughs> you would not be able to hop. You know, I'm really surprised, like, when people try to pull stuff like that, especially, like, with everything that happened with Reddit and the Boston Bomber. Like, they'll find your shit, you know? <laughs> they would dox you in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. Well, and they're going to, like, dox six wrong people yeah. way, too. <laughs> well, yeah, there's always going to be collateral damage. Hey, take that GoFundMe money, give it to the people who were like... <laughs> yeah. Man. 
It was her sister. sister. Her, her poor sister, man. She was just trying to like warn people that her, her, her sister's a scammer <laughs> and got called a transphobe for it. I was gonna and say, like, yeah, yeah. I hope they're doing okay and they're not, you know, just destroyed from the internet now. Yeah. yeah I remember. I remember seeing that fight. She's like, I'm not transphobic. I love my sister, but the bitch is a scammer. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, and, like, I I can respect people who, like, require scams to, like, live and stuff like that. Like, I get it. But uh, can we just not co-op, like, yeah, like, movements that, like, are really hard? If you're gonna gonna scam people, go scam your sugar daddy. Go get, like, a nice, rich sugar daddy. Find yourself a good pay peg to buy you shit. Only fans, man. Yeah. Yeah. Or just go on, there's, like, if you go on Instagram and I look up, like, pretty girls on instagram their comment section is full of old creepy men yeah it's like click on one of their profiles and send them some feet pics for some cash <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or like Chris, uh, yell at them in a video because they seem really into that shit too humiliate yeah. them. oh get that really, head get that bread, bread then, and leave yeah. period <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's my mini so i hope you guys enjoyed it i love uh internet shit like this <laughs> because this, I just, this is a very like bad girls club mini <laughs> <on brand. laughs> this is very on brand for me <laughs> oh. but yeah but hey thanks for being here I hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you next time bye bye Time now for your latest weather forecast. Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, Jeffrey Dahmer, The Green River Killer, BTK, five infamous serial killers who operated undetected at the same time. We weren't looking for people that were hiding in plain sight. A three-night limited series reveals the origins of serial killing. No computers. No DNA. We didn't have the 911 system. That makes it difficult to catch them. Told by those who witnessed it all. My mother prayed to die peacefully in her sleep. That's the one thing she did not get. Invisible Monsters starts Sunday at 9, part of True Crime Week on A&E. Parent, volunteer, employee. With your different roles and busy schedule, how can you find time to complete the degree you once started? Cornerstone University's programs are designed for busy adults like you. Take one course at a time, back-to-back to to move through your degree quickly. Attend through an on-campus, live stream, or 100% online format, whichever works best for you. If you're ready to go further in your goals, we're here to make it possible. Achieve without ceasing. Learn more at adults.cornerstone.edu.
If you've ever been a renter, you know it's stressful to find a place with everything you love and nothing you don't. But did you know Zillow does rentals? It makes the search so easy. They have filters for pretty much everything, so you can find that place that's in your budget, but also isn't a shoebox. Or a place that's close to your parents, but far enough they have to call first. Plus, it's easy to apply, request tours, and pay rent in the app. Head to ZillowRentals.com and find your sweet spot. Hi, I'm Pete. I'm an IT manager. Today, I want to talk about... Pete, heads up. We've been hacked. What happened? My password is my birthday. Everyone knows that. February 14th. Why would everyone... I don't get how these people figure this stuff out. I think I do. Have you ever updated it? Yes. I changed it to Valentine's Day. (sighs) Okay. We're protected with connection security services. You just got to be more careful, Pete. Okay. Yep. For hardware, software, support, and empathy. For Pete's sake, connect with Connection.